Welcome to this illustration channel. With this tutorial, we'll see how to cartoon yourself step by step. You can use your graphic tablet if you have one, or your mouse, or your trackpad, or whatever you have. Let's get illustrating. My program will be in Spanish, but I think that it won't be a problem, I hope. A step number one, create an artboard and let's create it in a size of 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. It's a good size so that our final image has a good quality. Now we can import our image. Make sure it has a good quality so you can see the details on its face. We drag this image here and we can make it a little bigger. Let's turn off an option so we can move freely. Go to view and disable these options. Snap to pixel and snap to point. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see the layers better. Here, this layer will be only for the base photo. We lower the opacity to make the outline. I will leave it at 70%. Let's block this layer by clicking here and creating a new layer. The whole picture outline will go here. We will use our brush tool. You can use any brush you have. It doesn't need to be a special one because we will apply a brush to give it a better style later. Double click on the brush and we have this panel to set the smoothness. We can leave it in the middle and try that out. When you do the strokes, make sure they are thin so you can see how it looks. To make our line look like our person, we should try to copy it as we see it in the image. The strokes should follow the same lines as the whole picture. So use also the direct selection tool to modify the anchors of the strokes to imitate every gesture they have. It's also good that we divide the strokes by parts so that it has more movement like this example. Instead of doing one stroke, we can do it in different strokes. With some details that the face has, we must be careful that they don't look too heavy like this example. It will be better if we do it in this way. Copy all the details that the face has and take your time to do this step. The hair, eyebrows and beard will be done later. Here we can see a good progress with the outline. Our illustration starts to have the shape of our person. Now let's apply a brush to keep a better style to all those lines. We select everything and here we put the style of uniform. With that we can apply any of the brushes that the program has. Here are some styles that we can apply. You can try any of them. I will use this style and I will increase the stroke weight so that we can see that style better. Look at the difference here between one brush and another. I think this one looks better than the other one. Also you can download some brushes that have a similar style for free. The link is in the description. Then we open the brush panel, go to this icon, other library and open the file you downloaded. This one has three brushes that are very similar to graphic tablet brushes. Select everything and apply this first brush. See how it looks compared to the other two. You can decide which one to use. The idea is to give more style to the whole outline. We can do the eyebrows now. Again, with brush, we can do several strokes in this part and we should follow the same lines of his eyebrows so they look the same as the photo. Try to fill all that in with lots of strokes so it looks very realistic. 
If we apply the brush again, we will see an excellent result. For the beard, we can do exactly the same. The truth is that with the mouse, it can take a little time to do all this, but it's worth all that effort because the final result will look very good. So practice as much as you can and take as much time as you need. In the end, you'll see that it was worth it. When you have it ready, apply a brush and lower it a stroke way so that it looks really good. Right, looks like a good job so far. Let's give it a little dripping effect for his neck. Doing it manually is sometimes difficult, so find a reference image so we can copy it. I imported this image into my artboard. We can put it in a new layer. And guided by the photo base, we modify that image. To the format, we go to Object, Envelope Distort, Made with Mesh, and here we put 1 and 1. Now we use our direct selection tool and modify these anchors to look good. And we draw lines following that guy image to give it that drip effect. Here's that video along with two other ideas that you could do it. We could do an extra drip to give it more depth. Excellent. Now we can work on the hair using our pencil tool. We double click and set up like this way. Smith's hair is curly, so let's do it with circles that it looks the same. You can use the pen to do something like this. We can make copies by holding down the Alt key. We select everything and unify it in our pathfinder. And we could do it like this. Or we will use our pencil to do it manually. This size of his hair is kind of blurry. To do that, we can create a group of small hairs to make copies of that group to move faster. Remember to hold down the Alt key to make those copies. We can apply a brush to do these hairs and follow the process. The idea is that from the top it has more weight and decreases as we go down. And to make them look more blurred in this part, we will create a group of small circles and make copies again. Or we can use a brush and do it. This way, we'll give it the same style. We can give a better touch to the hair. We create another small group of strokes with this curve and copy it all around his hair. You'll see how we make it more realistic. Much better that way, right? To give a better style to the whole line, use this other brush and do some strokes in some places to give it more weight. Or you can also use the pencil and make little fillers. The truth is that all this will make your outline come alive. Before coloring, make sure that all your lines touch each other. There can be any gaps. Now, we drag this layer to this icon to get a copy. We block this layer. We select all these lines and expand them. 
do it up to three times to be sure. Then with Pathfinder, we unify them. With this select, that is, we click anywhere of the screen and choose a color for your whole head. We create a rectangle with that color covering the whole outline and set it to the back. Right click, arrange, send backward. You have to have something like this. Now we select everything and we merge them again on the pathfinder. Finally, we ungroup them, deselect and select that square and delete it. As you can see, the whole face is colored. Select any filler from the outline. Go to Select, Same, Fill Color and delete it. In this layer, there will be only the base color. Now we can color every part of his face. In the case of the lips, the upper lip will always be darker than the other one. Select everything again and go to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor with Presets, Color Harmony. With this panel, we can give a better tone to all the color. This one here is the color tone. This other one is the intensity of the color. And this one is the highlight of the color. Take your time and try to give it a good tone to all the base color. Now we create a new layer to make the shadows one. We are going to create three shades of shadows. So we have the base color, right? From this color, from the base color, all three shades will come out. That's why it's the base color. The first, a medium shade. This is a color that is between the base color and the darkest color, between these two shades. Then we'll be made the lighter shade. It's a slightly darker color than the base color. Then we'll do the dark shade. This is the darkest shade to make the shadows strong in the photo. Finally, we will do a highlight tone and this will be lighter than the base color. And we will work on it in the following way. We will start with the medium shade. Then we will do the lighter shade, then the dark shade, and finally the highlights. Notice how the base color will always be below all the tones. Let's do it. We copy the base color and look for a medium tone. The key of having a good result with the shadows is in the observation of the image. So take your time to observe it and think about how can you embed it in your illustration. You can turn the picture on and off to get a better view of those shadows. These shadows are a trial and error thing. Look, in this case for example, I see that this shadow tone does not look good. Maybe if I use a different shade it will be look better. Also, if you see that some of these shadows don't look good, try to do it in a different way or with another tone. Something that will help you a lot is to make a small analysis of the light, that is, look where that light comes. In his case, you can see that it comes from up here because all the light hits him directly on his forehead nose and so on. Then with that in mind, we'll know that there will be shadows on this part of his face. Here one, here another. This little analysis will help you to better locate those shades. You try to and look for those shadows. Here I show you the areas where I added this tone based on the image. You can see that nose and other parts are already shaped. The shadows of the other parts of the face will be in the same layer. 
for the shadow of the eye, use a grey purple dark color to give it a good tone and follow the same lines of the outline to make it look good. In the case of this part of the eye, we could also do it following the same lines of the outline, but it will look better if we do this way, with a hole in the center. In the end, we can use any of the brushes to give a little more depth to the whole outline. When we have this shade ready, we can create a new layer for Shadow 2. This layer will be under shadow 1. We copy the base color, choose a slightly dark color, and guide the photo to make shadows that are not so strong. With this tone, we can already get more depth to this part of his face. See how much detail he has with just these two shades. Now we create a new layer for the darker shade. We copy the base color and we choose that tone. There are not many of these shades and sometimes they are small, but it gives it more style and depth. Before going on with the highlights, let's give some textures to the shadows. Go to the brush panel in this icon, Artistic, Artistic Chuck Charcoal Pencil. Here we have a pack with several brushes that we can add and give them more movement. As we have our shades in different layers, we will be adding each shade in each layer. Copy the color of the tone and add these textures. At first, you'll see a color a bit different, but we will fix that later. Now, select one of these strokes and go to Select, Same, Stroke Color. Then go to Object and Expand. And with the Eyedropper tool, we copy the original color of that shadow. Do this on every shade to give it a good effect. Look at the difference here. Much better, right? Let's move on the lights. We create a new layer. Copy the base color and choose a lighter color than that color and copy those lights like in the picture. If you want, you can add those textures to these highlights too. Let's create a new layer, and this one will be on the top of all the layers. We choose a white color and we can make a little reflection for the eyes. Do it the way you want, and lower its opacity so that they don't look too pronounced. A very good result so far, right? Do you want to make it even better? 
Watch this Photoshop tutorial to create an amazing background. Or take a look at the entire illustration course to add other details to your illustration. Subscribe to this channel for more content and like this video. Thanks for watching. I'm the Illustrator.